start uh, with inspiration for the sword, uh, we wanted to look at Washington's Mount Vernon collection. Uh, we all wanted to do a longer design to give the sword a little bit more weight. Washington preferred uh, the longer, heavier swords as well. We also decided to cast the handle and the blade all as one piece to eliminate any spots. For the hilt, we were thinking about making it in separate pieces over the handle, but then we had a better idea. Just cast it all right on top of the sword, that way it's completely solid and has a nice clean appearance. For our blade, we narrowed down our material selection to choose between A2, S7, and D2. These are castable tool steels, which fits the competition. They also have a really high hardness and tough. You can quench them in air. When our hilt designers said that they'd like to overmold the bronze directly onto the steel, S7 stood out for its slow transformation rate. So we have 13 stars for the 13 colonies. We have stripes going down the side and written on it is E Pluribus Unum. That is the motto of the United States and it means from many, one. For the material, we decided to cast out of a manganese bronze. Not only does it visually match the time period, it's also corrosion resistant, it's castable, and it's one of the strongest bronze alloys. Something we learned from last year's competition was that we had very large gates and risers that we had to remove, which ended up being a big job. And we wanted to try and get rid of that this year. So we came up with our crack pipe mold design. This design has the blades at an incline inside, which we can show here. So we have blades coming through here. There's three of them aligned on the bottom and we have an inclined riser. And at the bottom, we have a valve. So using simulation, we can determine when these blades will solidify and they don't need risering anymore. Design the riser large enough so that it'll stay liquid long enough that we can drain it after this has solidified and it's done risering. That should give us just the blades and all the risers are drained into the ingot molds. Oh, the blade pour went great. The molds drained in six seconds according to plan. The riser was completely empty and the gating system almost non-existent and the blades turned out perfectly. There was a lot of discussion this year around our heat treat. We wanted the high hardness and toughness that the alloy offers, but we also wanted to retain some flexibility. We followed a standard hardening procedure for S7, followed by annealing, and then we double tempered at 1050 Fahrenheit. We feel that this gives us the best balance in our properties and our flexibility, as well as minimizing any distortion that could occur during heat treating. We designed our hilt mold um, to center around minimizing the heat that the tempered blade is exposed to. Um, we designed a small mold with a small riser that could be drained after solidification. We also kept our blade in um, a column of water to keep it cool during the process. And then we added flux to make sure that the bronze stayed wetted to the steel. With our casting done, all we had left was to grind and sharpen before wrapping the handle. The handle was encased in a 3D printed PET shell, swaged together, and finally wrapped with a leather grip tape. And with that, our sword is finished. We're super happy with it. It came out great. All of the design choices we made were worth it. Our sword looks awesome and it holds up really well when we swing it at stuff. We also would like to thank everyone who helped us participate in this competition. Whether we used your tools, software, metal, or your workspace, we're super grateful. All of us learn a lot, and we are super excited to be competing in cast and steel again. See you in Atlanta. <laughs>